Welcome to this series for Workers and Resources Soviet Republic for new players. In this video, what we're going to be doing is setting up the oil refinery. But before that, I want to talk about the way pipe work works in the game. And before that, I want to talk about some of the general principles of how storage works in the game. So for that reason, this video will consist of three parts. The a general overview of the storage, the how the pipe work and the associated buildings works. And then in the last part, what we'll do is we'll actually set up the oil refinery so that we can start making some cash from making fuel and uh, bitumen. So the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that all the storage in this game uses three types of buildings. You've got factories, which is what we've got here. Now, the thing you want to be aware of with a factory, and this applies to any factory, whether it's a steel mill, food processor, or the oil refinery here, is whenever they're attached to a storage item like this tank here, this is seen as a passive um, building which means it cannot push to anything and it cannot pull from anything. That will make a bit more sense when we talk about active buildings. Uh, but when these are connected directly to a factory building, in the case of the oil refinery here, this acts as an extension of the internal storage. So to explain that, what you see is that this oil refinery has got an internal storage of 450 tons of oil and then an export storage of 340 tons of um fuel and 250 tons of bitumen now by connecting this tank directly to the factory it increases the the available storage to the factory to what's that 1950 um, tons of oil and this what this does is that it actually it keeps the factory full because if you actually look here you can see that this um, factory can consume 250 tons of oil per day at maximum production and um, and more importantly, when you've uh, got a factory like this at maximum production, you need the exterior storage as well. So what we've got here, again, we've got um, 1,750 storage of all bitumen. And of course, because this produces both bitumen and fuel, there's also another tank just there. But I'll talk a little bit more about that. So that is a factory. And we've already mentioned passive storage, which is the oil tanks. Now, the other one is active buildings. Now, they're in... And what active buildings are, these are buildings that can push to a storage area, either by a pipeline or by a uh, factory connection. So what we've got here is this pump, freeway pump here, acting as an active building, which is pushing the fuel to this building here. Now, the pump jacks themselves can actually act as an active building, but with respect to pipe work, there's a subtle difference, which I'll talk about in a little while. When you're actually setting up supply systems, you do need to be aware of this relationship um, because this fuel tank here could not push to this fuel tank. So if you manage to get a pipeline, I can't do it because the distance between here and here is is too far for a pipeline. But if, if I did put a pipeline there, the oil in here would not flow to this um, storage area here. So that is a general overview of how storage works in the game. So now we're going to get a bit more specific about pipe work. And I'm just going to uh, confirm uh, a couple of things. In that first part, I was a bit kind of misrepresentative about this storage tank here. Because I because this um, pumping station, if I actually put in another... Where is it? <laughs> we put in another tank here. Like that build it very quickly it doesn't make no difference where it is and we're just going to build this now if we look at this tank and this tank what you'll see is the fact at the moment this um pumping station is pumping to here but this that but there is no onward flow now the reason for that is the fact that this is full up now if i actually now if i bring this up alongside pay attention to the one on the right what I'll do is I'm just going to delete some fuel there. What you see now is that this pumping station has the ability to push through two passive tanks, which means that this um, tank is now filling up. And you can see that that's actually filling up almost to the expense of this um, first tank. Now, this appears to be a very good solution to extend your fuel supply. What you do need to be aware of is the fact that if this tank fills up, so if we go to 
and do a manual purchase and we buy the maximum number of fuel i purchased that what you see is as soon as this tank fills up this um tank empties now of course this is now running because that truck just came in and took a tiny amount of fuel out of here and so it's now open so while this looks like a good um, solution you also want to be aware that this is actually a a little bit risky and the other thing that i want to show you is we've got a truck coming in here now this uh, oil fuel storage is passive but of the presence of a vehicle coming in here and picking up the vehicles themselves are active they can pull from the local storage here but what they won't do is pull from there this is not the ideal i know i've been using it as part just to get some income into the game for there but using a truck to actually pick up from here is not particularly a very good idea now what i'm going to show you very quickly here is if we come to here what the game does provide if we can find the right building is a fuel loading unloading depot like that so if we put that there let me just knock out that pipeline there if i connect that to there that's And we'll just build this very quickly. I have to put a road in so that we can actually. Oops, that went the wrong way around, but that's okay. And what we'll do is put this in here. And then we'll just flip this as a pickup point. And we'll you set this to oil. The actual loading stations in themselves are passive simply because they've got no internal storage. So the way to look at them is, is the fact that they are a passive building that can be attached to a, a storage output. Uh, go on game, can you come up very quickly? I'll just wait for that truck to come up. Now the advantage of using a, a storage loading bay when you consider the fact this has got two loading positions and this has got one. So what you do is you get more um, pickup point, but more importantly, if you come in here, you'll watch that the loading speed is a lot quicker compared to here. So when you're setting up a normal pipeline system, you want to use these loading bays. That also applies to uh, the rail loading area up here as well. Now, one thing I will show you about the rail loading is the fact that we come to here and we, the rail one is here and what you see is it's got two input sides and two output sides and one thing you can do with the rail connector is well, up this up let's say this is really for demo purposes and you can come to there that and then we'll just build this and this and this and make that connection so you can see and then I'll just complete this building out uh, properly and what I've done now is we'll set this one to fuel. Now this rail loading um, terminal can actually both pick up both uh, bitumen and fuel. So you can send two types, the two types of um, liquid outputs to there. And another thing you can also do is if you really wanted to, although I wouldn't, it can get things can get a bit complicated. So you can also take a pipe out of here to feed into say that storage over there. So these, these terminals can work as um, dual output and dual input of uh, resources. So using these terminals is quite useful. Now, so as a quick recap, a pumping station can push through two passive stores. But the, the other main reason for using the pump, these pumping stations like I've used here is the fact that the pipe, light, pipe can only be, I think is it 600 meters? Let me just see. Yeah, so 
No, it's it's about 337 meters. So you can't um, run a pipeline. So this is where the, the pumping stations come in. There is a difference between a pumping station and a pump jack. Now a pump jack can push in one direction. I don't know if I can actually, let me just, this is not an underground pipe. So we'll just uh, knock this out. Just delete this like that very quickly again. Uh, we can pipe up there and think this should pipe up there. Oops. Ah. And we'll just accept that. So we've now made the connection. And what you'll see is that oil is now arriving in here. Now, what you want to pay attention to is this where it says here. This says current production of oil per day. But what you don't get is the flow rate. But when you look at a pumping station, what you actually get is the flow per second, which is dependent on the output there. Now, if I um into here, I know I'm messing all this up. Uh, I'm, we're going to reset it and redo it. Now, if I take that, take that, and if we put a pump station like that, which gives us a three-way flow. Now, if I build on that on that now if you look in the center here in fact our auto purchase a nice big pile of not auto purchase manual purchase we're going to get a purchase that's we've now got 1500 tons and now if you look in the center here it says that the amount of material transported per second is 10.374 tons now if i unpause what you'll see is the rate of the oil going down and you can see that that actual flow rate is the maximum capacity of an oil pipe now that figure only becomes important if you have a really large oil field for example say you're lucky enough to have um, say eight or nine oil jack jacks raising oil what you may need to do is actually push two into one storage tank it's really it's just something that you do need to be aware of that they, these pipes do have a maximum flow rate and of course if you've got the trucks coming in here they will also be con contributing to that flow rate as well so that is the situation and i think that finishes the first part of the video and what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to reload the game and what we'll do is we'll actually do a proper setup for the oil refinery here so here we are i've just reset the game it's made it nice and tidy and what i want to, and as you can see i've already set up the, the input tank here and the output tank bitumen now a little bit of a tip here before we get into the, adding a few other buildings when you are building tanks connected to uh, an oil refinery especially if there is already workers in it and what you want to do is always build the tank first because the thing you need to be careful of is the fact that you want to set what will go in here. If you build this, if that pipe had been active and this was producing fuel or bitumen, the game will just arbitrarily decide what wants to go into this tank or what it wants to put into this tank. And then and it could be the wrong thing because, of course, we want fuel in here. So we're going to connect that up there. We're going to um, fund that pipeline there. Now, the next thing I want to do is actually connect this oil jack to this area here because we this covers our entire oil field here so this is our entire oil output currently goes through this pipe to here and of course we've got a big pile of oil there <laughs> and uh, what we can do now is just go down here we're uh, actually back up again sorry and we're just gonna Delete this pipe here. Game won't mind. And hopefully we're going to be close enough to I think we're actually now there's two pipes up you can build above ground and below ground. And below ground is slightly more expensive. If I, if I just give show you that. What you see here is an above ground pipe only uses steel and mechanics. If we press F3 and I go Left underground. Uh -huh. Press Q. Get some depth. Too long. Uh -huh. How did I know that? But what you see here is the fact that 
when you build underground, you need some extra boards and concrete and some uh, gravel. I'm just trying to think. Of... I think it'd be just as easy to put another pumping station in. Um, I mean, I could actually what we could do. This is actually, yeah, we could cheat a little bit here, actually. Let me just demolish this. I mean, got piles of cash. And of course, once we've got the ore refinery up and running, we'll be making even more cash because we certainly don't want to export the um, oil anymore. Um, right, let me just see. Back underground now. Uh, the pipeline can finish just to the right of the road. Actually, I just had a thought. No, I think we can work in B. Okay. Now, what I want to do is, is put the this about roughly about there. And then we'll just build this on the construction. And of course, this is going to store oil. And I think this is close enough that we can press E. E lifts the pipe and Q drops it. And we're just going to put that there. Q to there. And then we're going to go down below. Due to there. And we'll very quickly. That. When that finishes. We've now got the oil flowing into there. Now, what I'm going to do is just leave these guys. No, no, what we can do is I'm um, being a bit tight fisted here. What we can do is change you to there. This is only a very temporary fix. Remove the custom shed. And these guys can deliver the oil to there. So, what we've got now is the basic configuration of the oil refinery now as, as i previously mentioned all these are passive stores so these act as uh, extensions to the oil refinery itself so we've now got the factory set up and we've got some passive stores which extend this now one of the problems with this fuel tank is that we're going to be hooking this up to a train in fact i'm not sure if i'm going to hook that one up to a train let me just put the train connector in i'm just going to put in this is the train connector we'll put the tr actually if i got an output there haven't we um i think if i put train connector here like that i'm actually going to put in another fuel tank just there leave enough space for that tank there we'll have just bring the road out. This is just going to be a service road for the um, actually get that. Come there, build this up here. I'm going to remove that. Wash that. Well, go road up from here. Actually, no, we'll go that way actually. And we'll just road there so I can put the pipe back in. As you may guess I'm actually making this up as I go along. Now, what I want to do now is we've got another connector here. And I want to get some height. And... Aha. Get a little bit. We'll put a pipe there and we're going to build this uh, 
Um, we had set this one to fuel as well. And we're fuel connection there. And a fuel connection there. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is I want to connect the bitumen up. I think we'll go underground. Getting a bit messy. We'll make that connection there. Hook this up here. So what we got is just built that road there as well. <laughs> Road crew had just come out, but it's too late. So what we've got now is we've got a bitumen tank, which is deliberately put here because eventually we're going to have a construction industry here and we're going to be putting in a asphalt plant. And if I show you the asphalt plant, the asphalt plant um, needs bitumen. So what we can do is put the asphalt plant over here once we got to go with the gravel, which means that the output from here will go to the uh, asphalt plant here now the reason i'm connecting the asphalt plant to the rail construction is simply the fact that of the two uh, the resources in the game used for construction which is asphalt and concrete they cannot be stored so what will happen is uh, if we as you push out across the map you need to um, have a rail network that can distribute bitumen to feed your asphalt plants because of course this is going to become probably our central refinery for the map. And now, and of course, I've also connected in a fuel tank here. Now, you're, some of you are probably saying, well, why has he got two fuel tanks? And the reason for that is that we're going to, I'm going to put in a miracle pickup point. Probably put it about um, that. Want it to come too close, we want to take a little bit of advantage of some distance, so we can put it just about there. And then okay, I'm just gonna put an underground pipe. I must admit, I do like underground pipes because what it does is it leaves the all surface for roads and footpaths. And because if you put a pipeline in and then decide that you want to put something else in, um, in here, I'm gonna just pick this up. Now this is the road connector. Now the reason I've put in this second fuel tank is that this is going to become a really big city and it will probably expand locally. Now one of the problems with if you've got a rail connection here is that trains carry a lot of fuel and what can happen is that if you've got fuel coming into here the trains will steal it all especially when they're distributed into the whole map and what you need to do is protect your local supply and by having the two actual fuel depots here, what will happen is, is the oil refinery will split the output of the fuel, the two of these air, two of these tanks, which will meet, which effectively will guarantee the fuel supply. Another reason for having two tanks against one bitumen is the fact that, and you can also see here, for every 250 tonnes of oil, the oil refinery produce 125 tonnes of fuel, 95 tonnes of bitumen. Now, Bitumen generally isn't used in really large quantities. And if the bitumen tank fills up, the, the oil refinery will stop because it has no output. And that also works vice versa. That if the fuel tank work fills up, then the um the fact the refinery stops and then there's no more bitumen. By having two tanks here, you can actually get a little bit more storage out and running. Now what you could do is put a road connection there, but the, by putting this bitumen connection to this actual oil offloading point what we can actually do is set up a rail connection which will actually export the human which is what we'll be doing sometime in the future and of course what we'll be doing is using a rail distribution office to ensure that there's enough bitumen left to run the asphalt factory so that is it now so that is our overall structure set up we've got the oil refinery there now one thing i do want to talk about and if i get the tape measure out um, on the construction office it is train lengths. Um, now, if I show you the length of this terminal, you'll see that the length of this terminal is about 58 um, meters long. Now, a rail distribution office needs can produce trains of 150 meters. So, when you lay in track, um, 
this hook up in here. We're just going to come straight out. Right out like this. I want the rail track that when we build it, it's going to have to come out in a big loop to leave this area for the construction industry. So we've now got this area here. And what you want to do is measure roughly. Um, so we've got about 200 meters. Remember, note that I'm measuring from the end of the oil terminal. So it's actually, we need to come out a little bit further, actually. That's 218 meters. Remember, you need the length of the train plus the signals. And I want to cross over here. So what we're going to do is come out uh, a lot longer. And the, the best tip I can give you for this is, if in doubt, um, be over generous. And um, what you do is just put a crossover in there. And we've now built that. In fact, I think we're, let's build this. This amount of distance here ensures that if an extra long fuel train comes in here, it won't be a problem. And of course, if you, uh, just a quick aside. And what you need to do is put the mixed signals there. And of course, what you have coming in here the chain signal coming in and uh, out signal like that what that allows is for the trains to come in cross over use both sides of the terminal and the gap out here is long enough to ensure that the train won't get stuck because if as I say if the train comes in here and the crossover is too close and the the back of the train um actually it is just even even if it touches the signal that will actually block the whole terminal more importantly, the train won't be able to turn around. So we've so we've now got the factory up here. The, the last thing I want to do now is if we come over here, uh, what I've done is I've built another platform here. Um, what this will do is because of course in the last part we built this, which is for workers. But what we're going to do now is just set this up. Why have I got four excavators in there? Oh well. No. And what we're going to need is a couple of buses. Now, I'm going to be completely up front. If you look at this, you can see we, we need 500 workers in here. And keep this going flat out with 1,500 workers. Well, from the get-go, we don't have a lot of um, capacity on the buses. And one thing you want to do is just, uh, is just look at total capacity. What's the um, bus? What on earth is this? This is a mud train, 48 workers. When it comes to choosing buses, it's a it's a relationship between speed and capacity. I like these LZ69 there. They, they go faster than these and they've got 52 capacity. So what we're going to do is buy um, we'll start with two of them. And what we'll do is we're of course they've got to be in the depot and we're, we're Set this up as a pickup. Now, some players don't bother to do this. I, I'd like to do this because it just makes everything look a bit tidier. And we can drop off directly in the oil refinery because it's not there. And what we'll do is just come there, pick the route, go to this one with the little two stars under. What that can do is we can, you can click on there. That adds it to the, the line and you can actually activate it there. And what you want to do is turn on the line spacing so that the, the buses will then travel backwards and forwards between the two. And hopefully uh, we're getting some workers in here now. And what we're going to do, just wait here. And just for demo purposes, uh, but the, hopefully this will work. Otherwise I'm going to look a slightly strange. And what we're going to do is just wait here, just let the game run. And just to show you that um, the, the 10 workers will produce uh, the fuel and the bitumen. We'll just see how that goes. So the bus is just appearing. The workers will go in. Not there. And what you see is, see down the bottom, the fuel has been added to both tanks and the bitumen. So even with a very small workforce, you can get a reasonable amount of fuel out of this. So when you're first starting out, you can get the fuel from here to get everything set up. And so the next thing we're going to do now is here. 
We've got our little resist the fuel depot. Where's the guy distributing the fuel? These guys here. What we can do now just to finish off is that we can now take you off the put you onto there. So you're gonna pick up the fuel. And we can now remove the custom ship. What that means now is we've got the beginning of a self-sufficient fuel supply to our economy. And I've actually just realized I've forgotten one more thing to do with the oil refinery because we set this um, for export. And what I want to do is we're going to come into here and we're going to put another one just here. Um, I don't want that connection. Actually, we could bring this right back here. That. Stay like that. And then... Underground pipe. Need to there. We'll put a road through like that, road through like that. And this time I'm not actually going to build this because this is a long term project. This is going to be our oil import terminal. The reason I'm separating these is that this refinery is going to supply a lot of oil to the map for a long time. So, and of course, what will happen is, is eventually we will be bringing, if I click there, click here what you'll see is there's lots of oil patches here so what we're going to be doing is is bringing the oil in by train so what we need to do is just make sure that fact I think, uh, I'll just do the railway tracks again sorry and probably what I'll do is eventually connect these up to the line in fact um, I could probably bring this across and connect into here so there's one line going out or something like that but that's for a future video that is our oil refinery um set up just to show you we're, we're getting reasonable amounts of fuel in here because of course we've got a nice reliable supply of oil coming into here you can see and of course we've only got a very small workforce here but it will build up over time as we get more people but this is where i'm going to leave it hope you enjoyed the episode hope you found it interesting and until next time whatever you do enjoy your gaming